Hey, I'm Jake McNeil. I'm an indie developer currently working on my dream game, Project Jumbo. And if you're new here, I generally focus on making devlogs and tutorials, so you should definitely check out some of my other content. For this video specifically, this is part two of this tutorial series that I've been working on. In the first part, we did create a static website. It's very basic, very just bare bones, but it's just to get you going, specifically for indie developers, but anybody is gonna be able to follow along with this tutorial to host your website for free. So just to recap, in the last video, I showed you how to make this site from scratch. Um, it's a responsive site that goes from being mobile to tablet to desktop. Very simple, but it's very user-friendly and it's e it was easy enough to create. So now that whole site is located right now on my desktop in a folder called Jake McNeil, which is the title of the site. And in it, it contains an images folder with all of my images and I have a style sheet and an index.html. For this tutorial to work, you need to classify your main page as index.html. Do not do home, make sure it's index.html, that is very important. So with that said, how are we gonna get this site from being just on our desktop to actually being hosted online for free? Now there are several ways to do this, but the one I'm gonna be focusing on today is a service that I personally use to host my own website, mcneilgames.com, and it is a service called Netlify. So to hook up your site to Netlify, first we're gonna to have to create an account. Now you can sign up using either a GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, or email. Now I already have an account. I, like I said before, I actually use this to host my current site, mcneilgames.com. So if I just go back and then log in, it's just gonna take me to all of my sites that I have. Currently, I only have my mcneilgames.com, but right now I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to host your site online for free. So once you log in, you're gonna come into a page that's somewhat like this. Yours won't have a site that is my website, mcneilgames.com. We're gonna be adding another one. So this is what you will be seeing. And it says, wanna deploy a site without connecting to Git? Drag and drop your site folder here you're gonna see how easy this actually is. So if I, I'm gonna pull it up on my other screen here, just one second. So if I was to drag my entire folder, the enclosing folder for my website, which is Jake McNeil that we had on the desktop, and I was to drag it and drop it in here, you could see that it uploaded and it's already published online. It's already being hosted, albeit without a good domain, but if you wanted to look at it then, you can come up here and this is your link to it. And you can see the difference between that versus it just actually being stored on our uh, desktop. So this can be accessed anywhere online. But the next part is setting up a custom domain and it makes it really simple. Like it gives you a one, two, three step plan here. So if we were to go and set up a domain, all you would need to do is you can either buy a domain through them or you can plug in your domain and then just verify that it's your domain. I would, I would strongly recommend that you go through Google Domains to get your domain. Um, from what I can see, especially for those of you that are trying to save money, Google Domains is pretty much the cheapest option out there. It's, I believe it's like $1 a month for a .com. And that's versus like, uh, say, going through GoDaddy. I believe, I know a few people that go through GoDaddy and I think they charge like 15 ish dollars a year, whereas Google Domain charges only 12. So. Save yourself a little bit of money and connect your Google domain. So what you would do is you just come in here and you would uh, type in your domain and then you just have to verify it. It's pretty simple to do and it sets it up for you. I'm not gonna do that because I don't really care about this site. This is just a tutorial site. It's really just a carbon copy-ish, the look of it anyway, of my actual site, McNeil Games. So I'm not gonna worry too much about this. I do wanna show you guys how you'll update your site, say that we change something in the code of the website that we wanna implement later on, right? So to do that, I'm just gonna open my index.html. Okay, so just to show you guys right now, right, let's just close off this one. This is the old site, the one off of our desktop, so we don't need that anymore. This is the one that's hosted by Netlify, and we're just gonna change this text that says games to something else. So if we come down here, I'll show you guys how easy it is to edit the site. So. Just take that and let's write something like um, we changed it, okay? I'll save that and then exit out of it. 
And then all you need to do is go back to Netlify. You're going to go to your deploys. And then just like before when we created the site, all you need to do is drag that new folder into here. So if we drag our folder and put it up here, you can see it's already published the new version. So if we were to come over here and hit the refresh button, oh, my bad. Why is that not working? Okay, I see what we did. Um, so we only changed the mobile version. So if we were to come over here, <laughs> we did change it, okay? So if we were to minimize this, if we were to go down here, it can you can see we changed it. It looks terrible, but um, it did work. So that's how you would update your site. So say that we didn't like that text because it's really actually not very good. You can actually roll back in versions and they keep all your versions for you. So if we just go back to our original production and we just hit publish deploy and then just hit publish. So that'll actually republish it. So now when we come back in and we were to refresh, if we were to come back here, it stays as games. So it's really cool because you don't have to worry about losing anything if you were to deploy something and uh, you'd already erased it off of your desktop and you didn't keep versions. So it's really nice. Now the next thing you're definitely gonna wanna do or know about when you're making this is you're gonna wanna come over to your site settings. And in your site settings, you're gonna wanna come down to where it says build and deploy. And in build and deploy, come down to where it says, um, into the post-processing section and in the post-processing section come to the asset optimization and then hit edit settings so in the asset optimization currently everything is disabled by default you're going to want to uncheck that this way you can get good urls or what they call pretty urls basically what that means is instead of having an about.html or whatever your page was called it'll just say about it'll leave out all the .htmls from all your sites so instead of it saying like on mcneilgames.com so like say if we were to go to my press kit right it would be slash press kit normally without this it would say .html and that's just really ugly but i do use this so it actually takes that away giving you a pretty site or a pretty URL as they like to call it. So definitely you're going to want to have that checked. As for the bundle CSS, I personally take it off just because I run into a few issues. Um, basically just the way that I built my CSS um, for my website. So if you run into issues with your CSS or something not working, just uncheck that. You can check that if you want, but you don't have to. I always leave Minify CSS on. Um, basically, it's going to run CSS through a minifier to reduce your file size. That's always good. It loads things faster. You can bundle your JavaScript. We didn't write any JavaScript for this, so really we wouldn't need that. Um, Minify JavaScript, once again, we didn't do any for this tutorial, but if yours does, you might want to incorporate these. So, And then one thing that I highly recommend is uh, compressing your images. This will help load your site a lot faster because once, I, like I said before, this is a free host. So they're not gonna, it's not gonna be blazing speeds, but it does work. So compressing the images is actually really gonna help uh, quicken things up. And it's, it runs it through this thing where it's a lossless image compression. And I think it looks really good. I use it on my site. So like when you come over here, if we were to go to games, it loads these so much faster than it would if I was using the high or not compressing them at all. I love Netlify. I personally use it. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. So you don't need to worry about this being like some promotion or anything. It's not. Now there are a few drawbacks, obviously. Um, one, this is only for static websites, meaning basically you can only run HTML, CSS, and a, a little bit of JavaScript. So it is somewhat limited on that front, but for especially for indie game developers, which is what this is somewhat aimed at, it's like the perfect thing for you guys. It's It hosts it for free, so you don't need to worry about it. It Basically, it's just a you work, you put it up there, and you can forget about it until you want to update it. So... It's a great service, and if you're ever curious and you want to upgrade your plan, you can always come down to the pricing and look at what they have to offer. Like I said, I use, I personally use the free version, and I recommend that you do too. The only thing that I really look at the pro version and kind of wish that I had was the uh, email support. Um, 
I just think it would be kind of nice. I, I do know a way that you can get an email linked with your website and your domain 100% free. So you can get that personal email for free. If you guys are really curious about that, just let me know in the comments and I'll consider making a video. It depends on how many people ask for it really. And yeah, I personally use that for my own site. It's, it's really nice. Because most people, like even on Google domains, they want to charge you $12 a month for that. So it's kind of a useful thing to have. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one.